Russian state TV is fuming about Britain's response to its invasion of Ukraine and is bending the truth in its propaganda war. Channel One Russia is perhaps best known in the West for its brief broadcast of a live protest by its former employee Marina Ofsyanikova last month. Ofsyanikova burst onto a live set holding a banner and shouting, Stop the war. No to war. She was later fined the equivalent of around £215. But the state-owned broadcaster has been through most of the war, a mouth barks for support of the Russian invasion, described by Vladimir Putin, and, indeed, Channel One, as a special military operation. In its programming last night, on Sunday, a presenter accused Britain of falsely pinning war crimes on Putin's forces. Discussing action in the Ukrainian city of Bukha, Vladimir Solovyov, quoted by Francis Scar of the BBC, said, the war against Russia entered a new phase today, very soon they'll accuse us of genocide. Quote, to all appearances this whole provocation was plotted by the British. On the screen, Solovyov presented a post on Twitter by Melinda Simmons, the British ambassador to Ukraine. Amid reports of Russian troops employing sexual violence in Ukraine, Ms. Simmons wrote, rape is a weapon of war. Though we don't yet know the full extent of its use in Ukraine it's already clear it was part of Russia's arsenal. Women raped in front of their kids, girls in front of their families. As a deliberate act of subjugation. Rape is a war crime. Channel One's report suggested to its Russian viewers the West is lying in its approach to the Russia-Ukraine war and will stop at nothing to tar the Putin regime. This theme has been continued today, on Monday, with another Channel One presenter, again quoted by Mr. Scar, bending the words of Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Olga Skabayeva told what Mr. Scar described as her millions of viewers that Mr. Johnson has vowed to starve Russia. She added, that's a direct quote. It is, however, a misquote. The Prime Minister instead vowed to starve Putin's war machine. In a post on Twitter, he said, we are stepping up our sanctions and military support, as well as bolstering out humanitarian support package to help those in need on the ground.